TypeScript is incredible. Not only does it give you great type safety, but it also makes it so that your editor has better autocomplete features. I just absolutely love it. But one area where type safety has always been lacking across any language that you can think of has been in the routing of your application. And that's because pretty much no matter how you do routing, you always have your routes defined in one place, whether it's a page-based routing system using something like React Router or just using like a config file to define your routes. And then on top of that, you have a second area where you're using all those routes. These are things like links in your pages, redirects that you're doing and stuff like that. So you have a place where you define your routes and you have a place where you use your routes. But so far, we've had no way to link them together so that they are both aware of each other. That means if you change a route in one place, you need to manually change it in every other place. And if you miss one or misspell one, you're going to have huge bugs in your application because now your routing is broken, which is one of the most important parts of any application. That's why I'm so excited for Tan Stack Router because it's the first type safety router that I'm aware of where your router is aware of all of the different routes in your application and it can give you autocomplete for your different routes. It can give you errors if you misspell your routes or you don't provide the correct information to your routes. And overall, it just makes writing routes incredible. I don't know if this is going to overtake React Router, but I can guarantee you that React Router is going to need to step up and add type safety into their router. Otherwise, Tan Stack Router is going to overtake it for sure. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And today we're talking all about the Tan Stack Router. And the most important thing I want you to realize about this video is this is in beta and this is early beta at that. So there's a lot of missing features, a lot of missing documentation, and overall the actual syntax is guaranteed to change over time but I'm not gonna be going over the deep dive of different syntaxes. I kinda of wanna talk about the overview of what TanStack Router is, what it means for routing in general, and why it's so important. So if we just go here to the documentation, for example, we can kind of look at the overview. Really, the important thing about this is that it has that 100% TypeScript support. It's super type safe. And another thing that's really useful about it is it has a bunch of information for dealing with search parameters, which is something I feel like we've kind of gotten away from with modern day routers. Really, we just use like state variables instead of using search params, which makes working with search params a little bit more difficult. And search params are great because it allows you to share links and store all your state in the URL. So having first class support for it and really good support at that, even with type safety, is a great reason why TanStack Router is so amazing. But you will notice if you go through here and you try to click on a lot of their different you know, documentation, almost all of it says to do for now because there's not much documentation out there. There's only a few different sections where there's actually documentation and it's kind of missing some of the key points that you need to be able to build out a full application, which is why I just want to go through some of the example applications to kind of show you what this does and why it is so impactful. So this first example is going to be incredibly simple, just kind of showing you the basics of the router and why it's so great. So if we just scroll down here a little ways to the actual you know, bulk of our code inside of our app, we have a router provider, very similar to like the router provider that you use inside of React Router. We have some links, which is you know pretty used to that with React Router. We have an outlet where it's going to render all of our route-based code. And then we have some dev tools down here because this actually comes with built-in dev tools. As you can see, I have a bunch of information about development related tools. And when I'm not super zoomed in on my page, it's much clearer to read. But obviously, since I'm doing this for a YouTube video, I zoom in to make it a little bit easier for you to read. So that's really cool that they have all these different features, but how exactly do you create your router? Well, you can see we pass a router into our router provider. And if we scroll up a little ways, this is all the code for defining our router. Now this may look a little bit messy if you're used to doing this with React Router where you put like JSX components down here, but React Router actually has a way where you can create your router using different objects and the syntax is very similar. As you can see, we give it a path and we give it a component. For example, this is our home path, we have an about path, we have a store path, and we have different components. As you can see, we can go to those three different pages on the right hand side of our screen. Then we have this root router where we're just adding some children. So you can have nesting by adding different children, which is what we're doing right here. And then we're just creating the router from that configuration. Now, the important thing about this is this one section of code right here. All we're doing is we're taking our router, we're getting the types from that router, and we're defining that as the type for our router of our entire application. This little section of code right here is what does all the magic for all of our autocomplete for us. So now when we come down here, you know we've defined an about, a slash, and a store page route. Let's say I wanted to create a brand new link and I wanted to go somewhere. Well, as you can see, boom, I have autocomplete. I can go to the home page, for example, or I can go to the about page, or I can go to the store page. And it has autocomplete for all of those different pages, which is amazing. And if I come up here and let's say, you know what, I change this to about two. If I save my page, 
scroll down, you can see I get an error immediately. It's saying, hey, this doesn't work. About is not a valid page. Change it to about two. So I change it to about two. Now when I save, give my page a refresh, you can see everything is working as before. I go to about, it's going to the correct page. Now this is obviously an incredibly simplified version of the router, but it kind of has everything you need in a router. You have, you know, creating your different routes, you have doing nesting within your routes, you can have like layout routes as well. So that's what this outlet is doing right here, kind of. So you have layouts, you have nesting, you have everything you could possibly need with your router, but it gets even better than that because you can go even beyond what you can do with React Router and do really cool things with things like search params and and actual params that you pass along inside of your URL. Now this example right here is pretty much straight out of the examples inside of the TanStack documentation. It's all contained in one file, so it's really easy to follow. And I kind of want to just minimize everything down so we can really see what exactly is going on with everything, because it's quite complicated. All of this code right here is just for defining our routers. They also have all the components, you know, defined in line, as you can see here, you would normally pass it a component, but you know, same thing, you have all your router based code right here, we're declaring our router by creating it based on the config. And then we have that all important line, which is setting up all the types for us. And then we're just rendering out our router down here. So let's take a look at a very simple one. We have our root, for example. So our root right here is going to have some links. So we have a link here that is going to the home page, and we have a link that is going to our post page. Right now we aren't on the route, you know, the root page, so we don't even need to worry about this. We'll minimize this down. Now let's move on to, let's see here, our post route. This is where we are right now. We're at slash post. Now, as you can see, this has some interesting stuff. We have this loader, which is kind of interesting. We have our component, which you know is just your normal component you render out that's giving us the content over here. And that's all that we have. We also have this error section as well. But the important thing is we have a loader, which allows us to load in our data automatically. And it's going to wait to show the content on our page until our data is loaded. So right here, this automatically is waiting for 0.5 seconds, 500 milliseconds every single time that you call this. So if I click on a link, it's going to simulate a 500 millisecond delay. So I click on this. 500 milliseconds later, my post shows up down here. Same thing, click there. 500 milliseconds, my post shows up right there. So it's really cool that we can do this loading right here. This gets rid of the need for doing a bunch of use fetches inside of your component. It just has it right here in the loader, which I think is definitely the better way to do this. And it makes it easier to do things like pending statuses or error statuses, because if we have an error, we can render out this error component instead. Another thing that's really great is you can just pull that loader data straight out of, you know, this use match here, which is getting our URL route, and it's getting all the data that we've loaded from that loader data, which we're returning right here. But the really cool thing is down here when we have our links, as you can see here, we're passing our two param. And if I just come in here and I do some autocomplete of a string, you can see that we have, you know, this is going to be our slash post slash post, and then we have an ID or slash post. We have all of our different routes being defined and it's taking into account things like our post ID right here. In our case, we're just doing a two to that post route ID, and we're also making sure we pass along our params. And the important thing about this params is it makes sure it helps with all your TypeScript stuff. The key about this is you're probably going to end up writing more code using this style of router than you would with React Router, but that extra code is gonna give you that type safety. So this, by defining your params right here, just make sure that all of your types of your params line up and make sure that you're passing along the correct params, which is what we expect. And then we just have you know, some standard stuff for the actual styling of everything, and that's about it. If we minimize out of this, we can see that a lot of our other stuff looks pretty similar. You know, this is just a simple component. This also has a loader. You can see our route here is for that slash post, and we're getting that post right here. And then you can know we see we have a component rendering that out. So again, we have that loader, which can take in all of our data for us, which is something that's really cool. And then when we actually define our routes, you can see we have multiple layers of nesting. Our route has an index and a post, and inside of our post, we have that post index and we have our normal post route. So we again have more layers of nesting. Now, like I've mentioned, a lot of this syntax is guaranteed to change over time, and that's perfectly okay. They're probably going to make it even better than it already is, and hopefully make it a little bit less verbose because there is quite a lot of code that you have to write. But this code makes it so much easier to deal with everything because if you look inside of one of these, like for example, this post route, our actual component is super simple. I can fit the entire thing on one page and all of our logic up here for loading things is right here. And all of our logic for dealing with the different types is just built into the router itself. I am super excited to see what this looks like when the documentation is complete and it gets a 1.0 release. And when that happens, I guarantee you I'm going to make a tutorial on it because I'm so excited. And when I do, I'll link that video over here, but it'll probably be a while. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.